Bloomberg, Quinton, we continue to cover the Supreme Court's decision to strike down the Reserve Bank of India's February 12th circular, which dealt with stressed asset management. Uh, joining us for some thoughts is uh, Mr. R. Gandhi, former Deputy Governor at the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, Mr. Gandhi, very, very thankful uh, for you uh, to take the time to speak to us. Uh, uh, let me start by asking you, sir, uh, you know, we don't have the uh, details of the order, uh, but the Supreme Court seems to have uh, held that this is unconstitutional. Uh, you know, your initial thoughts on what this I am what the message that this sends out is yeah of course as you said that uh, the details are uh, we need to be waiting for the full text of the judgment to be available but with certain guesswork we, we, we can uh, make in the sense that what possibly supreme court had uh, in mind when uh, while uh, making this particular instructions ultra wise uh, my guess is that uh, yeah, as a regulator as a bank could tell the bank um, how much provisions they should have for an NPA, whether it is 15%, 30%, 50%, 100%. Those things, they, as a regulator, the Reserve Bank can always prescribe. But the, here, the Reserve Bank had prescribed that the banks, when it is an NPA within a given time, if the resolution is not there, it must be taken to liquidation. There, I think, uh, looks like uh, the Supreme Court has found that uh, that is uh, exceeding the limits because it can uh, give direction to the bank how their financials should be uh, shored up. That is well within the rights of there is a bank. But it cannot tell that by your borrower's uh, business should be closed. That's what looks like crossing the limit. So by if a bank full 100% provides for a NPA, the regulator cannot say anything more. If the bank would decide that I will allow the borrower to continue business, but I will provide for the entire loan because my profit is sufficient or my capital, my shareholders are happy to fund me. In that case, why a business should be closed? It looks like that is the argument. Uh, uh, Mr. Gandhi, uh, you know, so if, uh, for instance, uh, the Supreme Court is challenging the ability of the RBI to direct banks uh, to actually take a certain route, such as the IBC, which could uh, in some cases lead to liquidation. In fact, we had spoken to the lawyers of the petitioners, and they also said that essentially their challenge was that the discretion should lie uh, with the creditor uh, as to what route to take uh, with the debtor. If that is the argument, sir, uh, then it could also be argued that the RBI's decision to send the first 12 large accounts to NCLT or the second list of accounts to NCLT could also be uh, up for challenge, sir? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, there, there is a risk there because if, uh, if this particular instruction has been struck down, earlier instruction given by the bank in certain cases, whether they are valid or not, that opens up that um, uh, Pandora's box. Certainly, I'm not uh, very sure that about how it will be dealt with by the court. But uh, the thing is that, yes, uh, that kind of specific direction for uh, taking to uh, NCLT, whether that's why we need to be waiting for the, uh, the reading of the full text. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gandhi, certain specific questions. Uh, so one is that, you know, that February 12th circular had also done away with all the earlier restructuring schemes, SDR, S4A, etc. So now, actually, what will banks, uh, you know, what will banks do? Uh, the February 12th circular has been struck down. Those RBI approved restructuring schemes are not there. Uh, will banks be uh, left in a little bit of a quandary, sir? No, no, not at all. Because uh, what the February 12th uh, by last year circular has uh, prescribed is that the earlier schemes have been withdrawn. Of course, it has been withdrawn. But banks are free to frame their own resolution plan with reference to each part, uh, particular case. That's what it says. So but the banks have the full freedom in what way they would uh, restructure the uh, law. The earlier uh, Reserve Bank schemes provided for certain forbearance by the Reserve Bank. If you f follow the Reserve Bank's instruction, then certain by uh, it is not considered as NPA for some time or other, this additional time was given. Those kind of forbearance is not available. That is what is the meaning. But otherwise, banks are fully, completely free, even yesterday also, today also, to how to restructure a particular NPA. Okay, so that way there will be no impact in your understanding on either the NPA situation or the provisioning situation, which in any case would continue to follow the IRAC norm, sir. That's correct. That's correct. They, 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 only the compulsory reference to NCLT 
Uh, 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 that is the one which has now been uh, questioned. But otherwise, the provisioning requirements, the freedom for the banks to uh, resolve any case at their own uh, call, at their own discretion, that can be even today, even after this Supreme Court judgment also, should the creditors they decide to take the case to uh, insolvency, that there is no bar in it because IBB, IBC clearly says that once a, even a single creditor can take, uh, once there is a default, they can take the case to uh, by NCLT. There, yes, of course, a resolution will have to be worked out. If a proper resolution has been done, then the uh, things will go on that basis. If the resolution breaks and there is no consensus on the resolution, then the, the things gets automatically transferred to uh, by uh, insolvency. So that process is on. We will be continue to be on, but it will be at the discretion of the banks, not at the compulsion of a regulatory direction. Okay, so in that sense, uh, Mr. Gandhi, uh, the impact of this uh, Supreme Court uh, order uh, is a little bit more intangible than tangible. And I say that on two fronts. Uh, one, a lot of banks had said that this uh, diktat from the RBI had helped the credit culture. Uh, it gave banks a little bit of, uh, you know, sort of elbow room uh, to push borrowers into regularizing their accounts. Uh, one, perhaps that little bit of a stick that they had goes away uh, after the Supreme Court order. Uh, yes, there there will be um, a bit of uh, reluctance because the borrowers would be arguing that uh, by, I am ready for a solution. Let us all sit together and uh, decide to uh, how it can be done. So that's what the process under IBC also. The, the difference now looks that compulsorily they cannot refer. They have to take their own call to refer it. That's the only difference. Otherwise, it doesn't make uh, much of a difference in my opinion. Uh, is there a message to the regulator, Mr. Gandhi? Uh, you know, we were speaking to Mr. Cyril Shroff earlier and he said perhaps the message is that everybody in the country, including the regulator, uh, is subject to law and perhaps there was a little bit of regulatory overreach in the last few years because of the severity of the NPA problem. Uh, to your mind, is that the message? So they say regulator has always been um, uh, clear in their mind that but they, things can be challenged in the court. So on that, I don't think there is uh, no special uh, learning from this side because that is a free, it's a, India is a democratic country. Anybody can take, including the regulator, uh, to the court. So that part is all right. The difference is that whether the regulatory decisions are subject to uh, scrutiny. Under the law, it is already there, both under, both under RBI Act and BR Act and other acts which are applicable to the bank. There is a provision for taking the case to the, the Supreme Court or any and, uh, yeah, yeah, high court jurisdiction also in some cases it will be available. So that way, uh, regulator has always been aware of the position that their decisions can be challenged. By, by keeping that in mind, the regulator would always prescribe uh, by any instruction in such a way that it is not questioned in the court of law. That's the way things were uh, going on. In this particular instance, or, or in the last few, uh, few months or whatever it is, is a um, certain overreach that has also been compelled on the part of the Reserve Bank because of the huge NPA problem. Everybody was looking around helplessly. Nobody was taking the um, initiative to call the house in uh, to order. Everybody was trying to postpone. So Reserve Bank went an extra step, took an extra step uh, obviously, looks like, at least in, uh, in uh, hindsight, we can see that it had crossed certain limits. That's the way I, I would see it. It is not a special lesson. The Reserve Bank has always kept in mind that the uh, law uh, will have to be avoided, including by the regulator. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Gandhi, and I'll make this my last question. I think if you, you, you'll remember very well uh, that when that ordinance uh, was, uh, you know, sort of brought on the table to have the RBI uh, instruct banks to take, uh, you know, these large accounts to NCLT, uh, even at that time, there was a large debate as to whether the RBI should be getting into this. Now, with this yes, Supreme sir. Court judgment, uh, actually, in hindsight, the reluctance to go in that direction, uh, you know, was, was probably correct, sir. Uh, it's true because at that time, um, um, certainly I recall the position that uh, uh, even I had also made comments that um, even Reserve Bank should have the discretion. But whereas that amendment made Reserve Bank uh, uh, is mandated to give such a direction. So on that basis, Reserve Bank gave a direction. Now that is being uh, questioned by uh, the uh, Supreme Court. So that way, there, there is a little complication there, certainly. 
Reserve Bank, that's why Reserve Bank was not wanting to intervene in individual cases. That should be the, uh, left to the uh, bank's own discretion. Reserve Bank is supposed to make overall rules regulation irrespective of a particular case. So with this case by giving direction, that's what had created the problem. Looks like that may, my amendment may have to be relooked. All right, Mr. Gandhi, thank you so much. As always, very valuable perspective. And uh, thank you indeed uh, for taking thank the time you. to speak thank to us. Uh, that's uh, former RBI Deputy Governor R. Gandhi uh, commenting on uh, the Supreme Court order. As we all keep saying, we just have one line right now. We don't have the full details of the order. Uh, but uh, this is uh, views collecting on the basis of that.